you everyone so there's this article that's come out in the guardian which i'm sure a lot of you have seen uh that's called why i ditched my therapist to hire a dominatrix instead now i saw that title and instantly i was just like i i cannot read this i can not read this the title alone is just too much and then I saw people commenting on it and even some of my submissives told me that they'd read it, they really liked it, that it made them feel like, you know, some that the, the, they, they connected with it. Um, and so I thought, okay, I will read this article. So the other day, about two days after the Femdom Ball, Mistress Lola was staying with me. We came back here and I was like, shall I read us? this article and I read it and picked it apart as I was reading it and I'm going to do just the same for you because I think that there are lots of points that are made in this article which should really really be looked over and discussed a lot of things in this article are in my personal opinion not okay so let's start shall we it's by a lady, first thing to note, Sophia Baritavara, so that's very interesting, it's not written by a man. <sighs> so, my dominatrix life coach isn't afraid to hurt my feelings. She's brutally honest and has no time for my excuses. Fair enough. That's the tagline, by the way. Now, let's look at the article itself. I love therapy, but I didn't love my therapist. Fair enough. She was lung, young like me and new. The best I could find with my cheap insurance. Okay, so remember that. She used her insurance to get her therapist, okay? Cheap insurance. I was her first real client. She was thrilled. I was broken depressed. Over the course of our six months together, we often sat through extended periods of silence, each of us desperately searching for something to say. Other times, I rambled about how pointless my life felt, the crushing guilt and fear of abandonment that follows me everywhere, and ill-timed thirst straps, just to fill the space. I did my best to entertain her with overshares and regrettable sex stories of my life as a sad, yet charming bisexual. And for a while, that was fine. Until, she ran out, until I ran out of stories and we fell back into silence. I left our sessions feeling worse than I did when I arrived. Well, fair enough. You got a cheap therapist through your cheap insurance. It was her first ever time being a therapist. You know, obviously, it's not going to be great. I quit therapy because I needed from someone who knew what they were doing. Fair enough. And possibly even more importantly, who knew what I was doing or what I should be doing. I didn't want another therapist. I wanted someone just to tell me what to do, who could kick my ass and tell me to cut the bullshit. Oh, don't we all want that, darling? I wanted motivation, advice and accountability from a woman who spanks grown men for a living. So I heard a dominatrix. Now, why did she specifically want life advice, accountability and motivation from a woman who spanks men? Hmm? I mean, that's a very weird thing to want, isn't it? But anyway, let's move on. In addition to more typical services, like fetish play, bondage and corporal punishment, some professional dominatrixes, dominatrixes with a C, darling, offer life coaching services that focus on confidence building and improving self-esteem. Although many also offer help with anything from fitness goals dating, and professional development. Many doms offer some versions of this service, said the Los Angeles-based dominatrix Princess Marks, whose services include traditional fetish play as well as lifestyle coaching. Men, women, and everyone in between tend to come to me for one of two reasons. To gain new skills in BDSM play inside and outside the bedroom or dungeon, or to improve confidence in non-kinky aspects of life. To learn how to make life their bitch, so to speak. Princess Marks conducts sessions with clients all over the world, 
either by phone, video chat or in person. I make an action plan with my client that outlines their goals and we decide on a timeline. We also agree on a set of incentives and disincentives or rewards and punishments. Punishments do typically not involve any physical pain, but if the client prefers, we use whatever is going to be the most effective. Now, first of all, I'd like to point out, this is life coaching, not therapy, okay, which is a very, very different thing. So this is just maybe helping someone who lacks a bit of motivation achieve a goal, like say, get a promotion in life, in at work, or save up money to, for a mortgage. You know, this is this is a very different thing from therapy. This is not helping you deal with your trauma. This is not helping you with mental health problems. This is a very different thing that this Princess Marx is offering. Life coaching of any kind isn't a licensed profession, which means coaches aren't subject to the same requirements, regulations and ethical codes as licensed therapists. Notice the ethical part. Any coach worth their salt will know when a client's concerns are beyond the scope of coaching and would, would be better served by referring them to a therapist, adds Princess Marks. This is crucial in my opinion. Now, any coach worth their salt. Now, if any willy-nilly can make themselves a life coach, if any dominatrix can say, oh, well, I'm also a life coach, who says they're worth their salt? You all know how many of you submissives have had poor experience with pro doms who have not been ethical who have had mental health problems of their own who've been abusive because obviously our job is unregulated now imagine handing over your life and motivations to someone like that not just a bit of kinky fun it's worth thinking about isn't it I found the Los Angeles pro-dom pro Mistress Justine Cross, who is very famous, respect, respect to Justine Cross, by suggestion of a friend. After I'd finally mustered the courage to email her, she greeted me with a hug outside of a West LA coffee shop, looking exactly the way she did online. Gorgeous, confident and high-heeled, only without the width and skin-tight latex mini-dress. And for £150 an hour, uh, an hour, she was going to help me. Now, don't you find this interesting that our writer was only willing to use a therapist that was provided for through their cheapest chips health insurance, but is willing to dish out $150 of an hour of their own money for a dominatrix. Now, for $150 an hour, you could get a top-notch psychoanalyst but you specifically chose to go with the cheapest chips therapist. I'm sorry, but this alone breaks down your whole argument for domination versus therapy. You wanted your therapy to fail so that you had an excuse to say, no, I'm going to a dominatrix. We found a quiet corner to talk about my goals, blending in seamlessly like typical customers chatting over iced coffees. I explained that my days lacked any form of organisational routine. I didn't follow a set schedule and kept most of my work deadlines and personal to-do lists in my head. I felt trapped in an endless loop of deadlines and burnouts and I used my mum's multiple calls to me during the workday as a convenient excuse to drop whatever I was doing. Obviously, first thing which we're all thinking is why the hell are you talking to your mum several times a day? Every single person who reads this article will think this. Unless you talk to your mum several times a day. In which case, what the fuck are you doing? I explained that I needed something I could actually do and see that would give me some direction. I knew this wouldn't cure my depression, but I hoped I could get a greater sense of control and accountability. I wanted someone to care whether or not I cared. Her first piece of advice was firm and direct. You need to stop calling your mum. Well, I think we've all worked that out, haven't we? I mean, doesn't take a rocket scientist. Next, she instructed me to buy a monthly planner and outlined a detailed, uh, a detailed plan 
of the personal and professional goals I wanted to accomplish before the year was out. With a dominatrix, there isn't much of a filter. We don't have to keep talking through everything, Cross told me later during a phone conversation. It's like, bitch, get a fucking planner. Now, I'd like to say, with a therapist, there also isn't any bullshit. My therapist may have not been, bitch, get a fucking planner, but she was like, bitch, stop talking to your parents, which actually did a lot more for me than buying a fucking planner. I'd finally found someone who could do what I always wish my therapist would do. Just tell me what to do. The idea of paying a gorgeous, confident woman to boss me around was exciting and terrifying, and I was ready to do as I was told. Yeah, that's not what therapists do. I'll tell you why, because what you're doing is you're offloading responsibility for your own life onto another person. And therapy is about sorting your shit out. Therapy is about taking responsibility for your fuck ups, taking responsibility for your trauma, taking responsibility for your decisions and your actions. Owning that shit, making peace with it and moving on. Offloading all of that onto another person is just a band-aid. You are literally putting a band-aid on things and that's not going to do any good to anyone. Anyway, I bought a planner, which itself was a revelation. And for the first time, possibly ever, I made a week by week and month by month list of everything I needed to accomplish. It wasn't easy at first. I'm not suggesting you do any, I'm not suggesting to you anything you don't already know, Cross told me over the phone. She was right. I knew exactly what I was supposed to be doing to be productive, to stay on task. I just needed to actually do it. I sometimes struggled to keep the deadlines I agreed on and accepted my chosen punishment. It wasn't a genital chastity cage, but for me it was just as effective. No TV. Once I started to get organised, I found I finally had the time to read the stack of books piled on my night table, meditate and end the day feeling proud of what I'd done instead of exhausted and disappointed by everything I'd put off. I was following someone else's instructions, but I felt a greater sense of control and ownership over my life, like I wasn't drowning anymore. Okay, so it is really, really good that the author of this piece is feeling that their life is less difficult, that they're finally moving forwards. This is really wonderful, but like I said, band-aid okay this is just a band-aid it's just like taking drugs for depression um it's just like cognitive behavioral therapy all these things have just scratched the surface okay you're essentially this going to see a dominatrix is a coping mechanism nothing more this is a way for you to deal with something in the short term and what you should be doing beside that is then now that you feel like you're getting on top of your life this is when you should start doing the hard work you should get yourself a therapist and you should start doing that talk therapy, doing that psychoanalysis, because this is not going to last, okay? It's a crutch. And the thing with a crutch is when you lean on it, you become weaker in other places because you become dependent on that. You weren't using that crutch before. And now that you're using it, you're becoming dependent on it. And other parts of you are becoming weaker because you've got that support now. But when the crutch goes, your other parts will still be weaker. And as a result, it will hit you slam in the face and it'll be worse than it was before. This is why this kind of thing is great, but you need to do the work beside it. It's really important. You can't rely on band-aids to fix a broken soul, a broken brain, a broken heart. That shit takes a lot more than band-aids. I don't lack the agency to think for myself or work productively without direct supervision and instruction. I do, however, enjoy being told what to do, which is something I've always been somewhat ashamed to admit. I love mean, beautiful women and I love when they boss me around. So basically, you're admitting here the reason why you went to see a dominatrix is because it turns you on. Which, you know... Fair enough. That's why most people go and see a dominatrix. 
But should you really rely on what turns you on to fix the problems in your life? Should you now? Hmm. Unlike my previous therapists, my dominatrix life coach isn't afraid to hurt my feelings. She's brutally honest and has time for my excuses. Now, if you'd spent $150 an hour on your therapist, you'd have found that your therapist wouldn't have been afraid to hurt your feelings, would have been brutally honest and would have had no time for your excuses. But you went for the cheapest therapist your insurance could afford you. Nothing makes me feel so fully seen like a woman telling me that I need to get my life together because she believes I can be better because she's decided that for now at least I'm worth her valuable time. I'm happy to please her and to pay her for everything she offers. Her attention, her encouragement, her punishment. Again, maybe if you'd been willing to pay for your therapist's time, you'd have got what you needed from that. But the thing is, you want to be turned on and you want to offload your problems on another person so you don't have to deal with them yourself. It's not gonna work. So now that I've read you this article and added my own little grain of salt, um, I would like to talk about my thoughts at large on it. So from the submissive point of view, right? So, so many people commented on how they love that this article was really kink positive, um, you know, that it, it showed BDSM in a really good light, etc. That's not my problem with this article. I, you know, my problem with this article is that this is going to encourage people to see thera to see dominatrices as therapists. We are not therapists. It is not fair of you to unload that kind of responsibility for your life onto your dominatrix. Also, it's not right for you to think that a dominatrix can sort your problems out because the only person who can sort your problems out is you. You need to do that work. You need to put in the effort. A therapist is there to guide you, okay? This is what a therapist does. A therapist helps you understand your psyche, understand the processes that make you do the things that you do so that then you can start looking into yourself and unraveling and unpacking your shit. This is not what a dominatrix will do. So you really, really, if you, if you feel that you have mental health problems, if you feel that you're struggling with life, if you feel depressed, if you feel a sense of self-hatred, go and get a therapist and get the best therapist that you can afford. Because getting a good therapist can be the difference between life and death. Um, or it can be difference between self-love and self-hatred. You need to understand that we are just for fun. We're for kink. We're for libido. We're to feed your sexual desires. We're not here to sort your life out. Then another one of my issues with this is on the flip side, I think it might encourage dominatrices, especially young beginner ones, to think that they can be therapists. Now, as a dominatrix, a lot of clients offload on you, um, which is quite a weight to bear on our shoulders. But this is nothing compared to what happens once you start actively wanting people to offload. Now, number one, if you're a pro dom and you think, oh, I can fix people, that's already the wrong attitude because you can't fix people. You can only give people the space to fix themselves. That is what therapy is. Therapy is providing someone with the space and tools to fix themselves. And if they are not ready to fix themselves, well then they won't get fixed. But that's on them, that's not on the therapist. All the therapist can do is provide the space and the tools. So if you're a pro dom and you think, oh, I'm going to fix people, that's already totally the wrong approach. Secondly, therapists go through years of training. They firstly do therapy themselves. Uh, you have to go through a certain amount of hours, and it's a lot of hours, of psychoanalysis in order to be allowed to even train as a psychoanalyst. Um, and then on top of that, 
you not only learn about psychology but you also learn about um, how to distance yourself emotionally from your clients how to take the weight of the things that they tell you how to be utterly and completely non-judgmental how to see beyond the actions that they tell you that they did to how those actions affected them on an emotional and psychological level because it's not what people did or what was done to people that matters it's how it affected them so if you are a dom and you think that you can sort people's lives out you're not just kidding yourself you're lying to all those people and it's not fair on them because people who are seeking help are seeking help from a place of extreme vulnerability and it's taking advantage of them even if you don't realize it even if you think you're doing well you're still taking advantage of people's vulnerability by saying that you can sort them out so anyway there are my thoughts so basically subs by all means go and see a dom and treat it as a therapeutic experience but do the work beside it go and do the therapy go and do the psychoanalysis because it's just like anything whether it's yoga whether it's you know silent retreats whether it's psychedelics whatever tool you're using for healing you need to do the therapy beside that it's such an essential part of healing because you're learning to make yourself vulnerable you're learning to talk and to be heard and you're doing it with someone who is able who has the tools to provide you with that space and you can then if you if you're just doing the doms thing the dom thing you're not you're not ha you don't have any tools to then process what happens to you in those sessions you might have an emotional release but the emotional release won't heal you it's the processing of that emotional release afterwards that will heal you it's the connecting with the root cause of the emotional release that will heal you so it's really important that you do the therapy beside going to see a dom and for the doms just don't go there please just don't go there just don't really don't by all means you know listen to your clients by all means every so often give your clients a bit of advice but if a client starts treating you like a therapist or expecting you to be their therapist refer them to an actual therapist because it's not fair of them to put that on you and it's not your job to be that for them and you don't realize it at the time but once they really start offloading on you that's a huge amount of pressure for one person and it could fuck you up anyway there are my thoughts on that article and why it's a very dangerous article and why I'm not okay with it um, so goodbye from me and goodbye from Layla who's a very naughty cat and I'll see you all soon <laughs>